are the tools that we use when we're working on the wheel generally. Um, same the wood knife. I, I prefer this tool myself, but both do the same thing. Um, this sponge on a stick I made, and this is another one I quite like that I bought. Um, so you definitely need a sponge on the stick to take the moisture out of the inside of the pot after it's been thrown. I use the piece of leather. I have it attached to a cork so it floats in my water. Um, and the piece of leather will be used to smooth out the rim. After we're done it, and a needle tool to poke any air bubbles. And a rib to compress any clay, remove slurry, provide some shape sponge and of course clay. I have water here um, that's already ready to go and I prepared that that's not shiny um, but damp and I'm going to attach my clay now to the bat. The clay I wedged it is repurposed clay so there may be more air bubbles if I didn't quite wedge it enough. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna have my sponge ready to go. I'm gonna have wet hands on top of the clay and seal the clay to the bottom of the bat. My posture at this point is very close to the wheel. I get as close as I can. Um, I can use my elbows on my thighs and rest them um, to provide me a little bit more strength and stability support wise. My elbows are tucked in close and I'm working between three and six o'clock on my wheel because I am a right-handed person. So any work that I'm doing, I'm doing between this area when I'm throwing, trimming, all of that. Um, you won't catch edges that way and have your piece go fly off the table. So I'm going to now cone up and then cone down. When I cone down, I'm going to use this meaty portion of my thumb and hand and let the clay fold on itself. pretty centered. My bat system is quite old. I've had it for a number of years and it has become warped over time, but the bottom piece, um, the insert, uh, sits flat and it is um, straight. So uh, you may see a bit of a wobble on the outside, but the, the clay itself is being thrown um, straight. So I know that I'm centered because when I have my hands on either side, of the clay and start the wheel. My hands aren't moving around. I can feel it. Now I'm gonna start with the first initial hole, the puka in the center, and I use my thumb and I make sure that my hands are wet. And I'm going to support my hands whenever I'm working with clay. Two hands together working on the project. I come in slowly and I move away slowly. As the project starts to get height and I pull the walls and my cylinder starts to um, get higher, I'm gonna slow the wheel down and I'm gonna be extra cautious when I come in and when I take my hands away. <laughs> If for 
some reason you feel the clay pulling at all on your thumb, you need to stop right away and add a couple trips of water and then um, finish with your um, thumb insertion, if that makes sense. The next bit, I'm going to put two thumbs together and push in. I'm gonna make sure that I leave a, a thickness um, of the size of my finger uh, at the bottom so that there is a bottom to the vessel and we have room to try trim a foot ring. <laughs> So now the hole is um, a little bit bigger in diameter and I'm going to now pull my thumbs outwards to widen that area. At this point, the width is great. I need to compress the bottom of the clay so that we don't get any S cracks and that the clay um, that is at the bottom of the vessel reaches all the way down to the bat. So we want to compress that. Okay. I'm probably going to get a couple of air bubbles in here as I start pulling the walls. I'm going to stop right away and pop those before I continue to pull. I'm going to be using um, these two fingers uh, and, and support on the outside by connecting my thumb and pinch um, the clay between these two fingers and essentially move the clay. I'm not forcing it up, but I'm just giving it less space. And so it has nowhere to go. It can't go down. It can't go to the sides. It's just gonna move up slowly. And I do this in um, increments and in small steps. So right at this point, I have this thickness of clay. When I do my first pull on the wall, I may just go just a little bit under that. I also wanna make sure that the walls are wet on either side before I start working. When I do my first pull and I get to the top, I need to compress the top. Each time I do this, it's going to reinforce that um, section at the top and, and make it even. If you don't compress the top, you may lose the project because the top isn't going to be uh, level all the way around. second pull and I definitely feel like something's going on with my um, clay. I, I probably have some air bubbles that are trying to be worked out. Okay, I feel it now. It's right here. So I gotta pop it. See what we can do here. <clears throat> A way to help this project at this time would be to run a rib over it just because of that um, 
those thin spots that formed from those large air bubbles. <laughs> slurry that's on it and it'll be really useful uh, when you're attaching the handle. Uh, it's the same thing as slip, the glue we use. I'm going to collar the, the rim a little bit and flatten the top. At this point I could choose to cut a bit off that room and further stabilize the project, but I'm going to continue. I feel like I can make um, a vessel out of it without having to do that. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, push out the sides from the inside of the mug and this sponge and this hand will be the guideline of how far that's going to be pushed out. The walls need to be wet. just to uh, compress the clay, remove some of the slurry. All that will help it dry quickly. Hey, where's your shoes? And your help. You also want to, at this point, smooth out the rim. I'm going to remove any standing water that's at the bottom of this vessel. dry, um, also to leave a little uh, notch where the wire uh, tool will come through and remove the, the vessel off the bat. Um, I'm also going to clean up a bit of the wet standing clay as that'll also slow the drying process. Might as well deal with it now. Um, That was quite a bit of clay that I'm able to remove. I'm going to certainly give it some shape at this point. I'm fine to leave it. I'm going to clean off some of this area. don't do that I really prefer it but this is your standard start point of the game mug so here is a leather hard mug form that I've thrown I'm gonna dip it in some water just on the rim like so and I'm going to find center again on my wheel. When I start the wheel, I'm going to start it slowly. I know that this is pretty centered right now. And as I would use a compass, hold the center point of the mug and lightly 
edge in a circle. I can see that the even the sides of all the circle are the same distance from the outside. I know it's center. I'm gonna get a piece of clay and break it in three parts. Roll it up. And I'm gonna put it in three spots so that the, the pot is gonna remain where it is. Hold my hand on the top. And double check with my needle tool to see if it moves. Nope, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to start to trim the foot. So to do this, sorry for my mess here, I'm going to be using a ribbon tool. I'm going to use a piece of leather at the end and I really like to use cosmetic sponges. <laughs> I'm going to have that wet and ready. So I've got these tools at this point. I'm going to keep my finger on the center just to make sure that I um, make sure that the pot doesn't go flying. And I'm going to take my thumb and anchor it to my other hand so that I'm using two hands instead of one. When I have two hands and anchored in the center, it's not as easy to be moved. I'm going to do a slight undercut. <laughs> tap on the top and it can give me an idea with the sound on how thick that bottom is. I also know that I left this much at the bottom of this mug so I'm able to trim that much until I reach right through. <laughs> objective here is to have the entire vessel the same thickness all the way around the bottom the sides etc <laughs> Now that I've done a slight undercut, I'm going to come at it um, on a different angle and finish off some of that edge. Now I gotta take off the weight that's in this center here. This is how I do my foot rings. You can come up with your own style as well. The um, guidelines are about the same, um, but yeah. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it. take in from the point where um, there's about that much um, half an inch just less than a half an inch maybe a third of an inch <laughs> amount you want to take a little bit off at the time. 
each time I do this, it makes the tool not catch edges. So there's little ridges and I'm then able to take off a little bit each time. If I was to just go in there and dig really deep, the pot's gonna go flying off the table. <laughs> to get used to that sound, the closer you are to the bottom. <laughs> leather. This time the sponge did the trick. There's no sharp edges. It does not appear that it would scratch the surface of the table. I really wanted to and I felt like this was rough. I could run over um, the edges with a um, whip. may be kind of stuck to the table because we dipped the rim in water. That's the case. You may need to have a clean set of hands and a firm hold. So let's see where I'm at here. Grab it on either side and gently start the wheel. Same thickness all the way around. I'm gonna put a handle. No. So we have a piece of wedged clay and a wet hand, and I'm going to hold the clay firmly and pull my hand down. When I do so, just as I would pull a wall, I'm gonna adjust how uh, tight I close my hand and make that opening. Each time I do that, I'm going to rotate the clay over. Now. So that's 
essentially the beginning stages of a handle. That's the handle there. And that curve along the top will be a good start point for where I'm gonna attach it to my rim. I have my mug. I have the handle I pulled earlier. I've got the slip that I took off the cup at the end. I'm just gonna use this scoring tool that I own, so start where I feel like the handle would be a good start point. And when I do um, make my handle, I want to consider that there's going to be an angle. I got to bevel this cut, so I'm going to bevel it like that. like that angle is going to give a really nice handle. Flatten this out a bit, clean up any edges. I'm a big fan of um, X-Acto knives, so I have a few of them. And of course, I'm careful. I'm going to score the side where the handle will attach and add some slip. So I'm going to add the slip onto my connection points where I scored. I add it um, on an angle. I want to make sure that the handle is straight. So when I start to work that connection in and be sure that I'm working those points really well. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. So I've got the bottom done. I'm going to fold that handle over now and start defining the shape I want the handle to make. I also need to take a look at it on different angles to make sure that I'm making the placement right. I'm going to score this piece. I have some slip there. That looks pretty good. Give it a little bit of support from the inside. And press it firmly. Wet paintbrush into the crevices to be sure those are also well connected. My handle is on and it looks pretty secure. I really like having a certain design to my handle, so I'm gonna do it the way I like to do it and my kind of signature that I make on my vessels. I have a potter's mark that I use. And I also have a tool to reinforce the inside to add my potter's mark on the bottom. I like to make a little button. Do a last check over the whole piece. Another thing to be aware of when you're working is when you add your handle, you may need to do a little bit of adjusting after it's attached on the handle itself and then possibly the rim. I made this piece, it's hollow, and I can wet the edges if I'd like, but I have no real particular name for it. I call it my rounder, rim rounder. So I'm able to go in and adjust any bits that would have moved 
when I laid it on its side and apply, applied that handle. But this would be a mug. When I put this to rest, I'm gonna to wanna to cover it and let the clay adjust to the handle. These connection points are actually kind of critical. Uh, as it's drying, it'll dry at different speeds, which could end up causing the handle to crack. If the handle then cracks at that connection point, it's not really um, sellable or you shouldn't really use it. Um, be a good thing to make mosaic out of. So you've got to really control the speed. Where we live is hot, so I will control the speed by covering it and letting it sit covered for about a day. After I've let the item sit for a day where the bag is covered, the mug with a handle, I then actually put it into this slow drying process, which is underneath this shower curtain. I lined the bottom with plastic. Here's an example of some uh, dried products, pieces that were, um, are actually uh, nearly bone dry, all the way down to pieces that are not. Here's the connection points and there has been no cracks after I've placed it into this shower curtain um, slow drying process. It takes care of those issues and prevents any cracking. I do monitor the attachment and make sure that they are all coming along nicely. If something was to appear that it was about to crack per se, I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar and slip and see if I can recover the project. If I can't, then the project is essentially not sellable or usable.